This show is part of the RetroZap.com podcast network. Our underground network is standing by at the drop zone. The transmission is being jammed. Looks like the Empire came out to welcome us. Attention, Rebel Convoy, this system is under Imperial control. Stand down or be destroyed. What a surprise. Star Wars sabers and scoundrels. Um, Starships. <laughs> Carabast. Yeah. Starship sabers and scoundrels. A scoundrel special edition. Greetings, scoundrels, and welcome to episode 16 and a half, a scoundrel special edition. On this episode, we will be discussing the latest episode of Rebels, the Wynkathu Wine job. As always, I'm joined by my intrepid co-host, Darth Taxis. Taxis, howdy, howdy, howdy. howdy. Oh, doing fine. Doing good? Good. Yeah. All right. Well, excellent. So sound the spoiler alarm, Taxis, because from here on out, this episode is full spoilers. And here is our summary. Hera reluctantly agrees to take the ghost to the Wyan Kanthu system after Honda Onaka convinces Ezra that there is a ship worth salvaging there. Unfortunately, they have to take As Morgan along with them. The rebels will get the proton bombs on board the ship, while Hondo and As Morgan will get all the treasure. Once on board, Chopper inadvertently activates the sentry droids when he dis- restores power to the ship. Zeb, Ezra, Chopper, Hondo, As Morgan, and Melch, and Ugna, and the employee of Hondo, are forced to flee the ship. They, reco- they recover the proton bonds, but not Hondo's treasure. And in the end, Hondo is forced to make a realization about friendship. So there you have it. That's our summary. Um, so, as usual, about 60 seconds or less, what'd you think of this one, uh, Taxis? Um... You know, I know we've talked a lot about some of the filler episodes, but this one I really didn't mind. I, I really enjoyed the story. I thought it was uh, engaging. Um, of course, it's probably anytime Hondo's involved, I, I always really, really love it. And, um, you know, I kind of like seeing Ezra, his reactions to Hondo's presence, and he's always vouching for him, and et cetera, et cetera. But, uh, yeah, it was fine. It was your typical little heist episode. And, um, you know, what could go wrong? So, uh, plenty apparently, but no, I agree with you uh, completely. Anytime Hondo's involved, the episode automatically goes up a notch. Um, yeah. he, he's such a great character to add Rebels, especially at this state of his uh, career and life. He's no longer the crime lord that he was in. Um, and Clone Wars, and so now he's kind of doing whatever it is he, he can to get by, and he's down on his luck, and you know he has to resort to working with the likes of As Morgan and trying to convince Ezra to go along with him on his schemes. So, oh, yeah. yeah, so yeah, okay, so the you know the episode begins with uh, Ezra trying to convince Hera and the rest of the crew that hey, we got this job. There's this opportunity for us to salvage some weapons. And, you know, he mentions that Hondo's involved, but he failed. He apparently had fell, failed to mention that as Morgan was also part of the right. package. And, so. and what happened to him? He's kind of fallen from whatever uh, position of power he had. You know? he, yeah, what did happen to him? You know, the first time we saw him was back in season one, or was it season one with uh, yeah. when Land- we had the Lando episode? And he had a ship and he had a crew, and you know, Lando pretended to sell Hera to him, which was not cool. Right. But, uh, you know, so there was that. And then he had a job. In As Morgan's mind, though, it was a legal transaction. <laughs> Yeah, he did bring that up with Hera, that mm-hmm. technically she still belonged to him, which she wasn't going for, of course. Oh, no. And then I guess in the second season, um, you know, Hondo and Ezra pulled one over on him on that station. Um, so, uh, you know, there's there was that, and then now they're, he's forced to work with Hondo, which I'm sure he had to hate. But, right. um and how disgusting was he walking in the front door, picking his ear, the wax out of his oh, ear? Oh, like, yeah. Uh, rubbing it all over the place. Oh, <laughs> that was pretty gross. That was one of the parts uh, we were both going, ew, at. <laughs> right, right. So I get from there, you know, they reluctantly agree to do it because Hondo brings up that there's proton bombs on mm-hmm. this ship. So uh, that was something else I was wondering. This is the second out of what the last three episodes where the rebels have been keen on getting their hands on some proton bombs yeah not just any weapons but these proton bombs uh, is this leading somewhere do you think you know i started wondering that because they did specifically 
now whether that's just a connection to the to the past episode you know i know they specifically mentioned that same type of armament you know mm-hmm. uh and i would have thought they would have been proton torpedoes but yeah, you know, if we were leading up to the whole Dodonna thing at some point, but uh, yeah, I'm I'm kind of with you. I'm kind of thinking that these are going to come into play sometime, you know, into the future. Right, um, that they're putting it there purposefully. Yeah, because in the last battle, that's what they were hoping to salvage from the um, the droid ship, and you know they rolled those the droids rolled those bombs out at uh, towards the ATATs mm-hmm. and you know which then the Jedi had to deflect the laser blast at well whatever um, and then okay you pull string A and then it activates device B which right better mousetrap the laser blast is connected to the lightsaber right, which is con- right. you know right, right it all works on paper okay yeah you know. So we also get the return of AP-5 uh, in this episode, which was the... What kind of droid is that? Everyone just calls it a Death Star droid, but uh, you know, voiced by Steven Stanton. It, it's, uh, another, it's another version. It's not like a Cybot Galactica protocol droid. It's like another company's protocol droid, from what I recall, you know. Um, right. But yeah, I'm not sure. I, I was happy to see him, although I was kind of like, oh, so is he just chilling out on their ship now, or... Uh, you know, well, he's also appeared on the rebel base on that same planet where um, Bindu hangs out. Oh yeah, uh, in a episode subsequent to his introduction, and they bring him along because of his expertise with this uh, freighter that the Empire uses, because that's where Chopper discovered him uh, back in the last season. So he helps make the plan. <laughs> I love it as they're getting close to the ship. He says to Kanan. Yeah, something to the effect of uh, this plan only has a 38.7% chance of working HK and Rex, but it was your plan. I <laughs> and, well, and, it uh, would have been zero. <laughs> yeah, and AP5 was like, yeah, this is as good as it gets. Um, so he's he basically told them where they can find the cargo on this ship and given them a plan for, for getting there. And he neglects to tell them about the sentry droids that are on the ship and he forgot to include that in the calculation. So I'm wondering what it was exactly. He thought was going to prevent them from being successful before they even got there. Right. Why wouldn't he warn them in advance? Yeah. Yeah. Well, not only that, but if he failed to take in consideration the sentry droids, why did this plan only have such a low chance of success? Um, anyway, all the weather, uh, all the weather issues, just the fact that you're dealing with Hondo, uh, there is yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. A whole bunch of parameters. So they are prowling around on the ship, trying to find their way to the cargo bay, which they eventually do. And then a key moment comes, um, chopper sent off elsewhere to reactivate the power on the ship. So mm-hmm. they can get into the cargo hold. But Ezra is impatient and pulls out his lightsaber and carves a big hole in the door. And so they just make their way in through that. Okay. The first uh, time I saw that, I just kind of glossed over that part. And mm-hmm. m- completely missed the tie-in later, you know, uh, for why that was kind of critical, <laughs> you know. Right. Uh, com- well, we'll comedically so, s- yeah, yeah. Yeah, let's get back to that in a second. Um, and then, unfortunately, by turning on the power to the ship, he also activated one of the sentry droids. And these were a throwback to the droids from Dark Forces. Were you familiar with that game? Oh, yeah, then? yeah, yeah. I was trying to see, remember where I'd seen them before. Well, I had an opportunity to watch um, Rebels Recon on the Star Wars YouTube channel, and they specifically said that these droids were inspired by the Dark Forces. So cool. it was cool to see them, but I was also just dis- a little disappointed that if they were going to bring in the Dark Forces droids, they were going to be relegated to sentry duty on freighters. Yeah. You know, they kind of reminded me a little bit of Cylons and Super Battle Droids mixed in at the same time. You That's know? a good connection. Yeah. yeah. Which might be what influenced them in Dark Forces. You know, it's been so long since so I played that well, game. Well, Dark Forces, I thought, was uh, around before we had Super Battle Droids and Attack of the Clones. Um, my memory may be faulty right. on that. Right, right. I think you're right, but I'm saying the whole Cylon element, you know. Oh, the, gotcha. The, gotcha. You know, okay. kind of relentless marching and. Well, and that kind of reminds me, again, that's the, the newer Cylons, uh, you know, looked a lot like them, but the old old school 70s ones still kind of relentless, you know, or a Dalek or any other metal monstrosity. 
you know, Terminator. 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 Yeah. <laughs> uh, something like that. You know, one purpose. Can't bargain with. Yeah. And they absolutely will not stop. Kill, so, crush, destroy. Yeah. Right. So Zeb's in charge of this mission. And uh, he and as Morrigan had been individually captured by this sentry droid. And so Ezra comes in and breaks them out and gives Zeb a hard time. Uh, and we'll get, revisit this in a moment. Uh, Ezra was not particularly happy that Zeb was in charge. But uh, yeah. so they're waiting there in the hallway and Zeb's telling everyone, just let the sentry droid go by. Just let it go by. And then as Morgan loses his nerve and yanks the gun out of, uh, was it Ezra's holster? I believe it was. Yeah, I think so. And starts firing <laughs> on the sentry droid. <laughs> And so the sentry yeah. droid falls down, and then Esmeric and cries, "I'm a hero." Oh, <laughs> I was kind of yeah. I was kind of hoping he would meet an untimely end in this episode as a hero, but <clears throat> uh, I don't know. He, he, I, I'm sure he's not going to be popular, but it, it, he provided some welcome comic relief. Yeah, as well. that's true. That's true. But so the sentry droid thing gets back up, <laughs> and to make matters worse. Once you fire on one sentry droid, uh, AP-5 informs them, they right. all activate, come after you. <laughs> oh, yeah, sorry, forgot to tell you. <laughs> so they have, you know, not just one unstoppable sentry droid uh, advancing on them, they have, was it three? Yeah, but yeah, it, I think in total it was four at one point, right? And uh, the, um, the AP-5, doesn't he kind of remind you of uh, Marvin the Paranoid Android? Oh, from Hitchhiker's Guide? Yeah, especially the way uh, Rickman portrayed him. You know, I have to confess, I haven't seen that version. Um, okay. He, he kind of, he, he almost, the inflections and such are almost like that. You know, it's... Uh, but yeah, I could see Rickman doing that voice uh, if Stanton hadn't done that. But, uh, yeah. so, I guess we should back up a little bit. The sentry droids are advancing, and, you know, as Morgan had gone missing, and the rebels had already set up a winch system from the cargo bay of the freighter to the ghost, and they were sending uh, proton bombs right. the <laughs> that, through the winch. That, that Zeb reminded, uh, you know, uh, Sabine, you know, be careful, don't jostle him too much as he's slamming him up there on the hook, you know, or, the, or the magnetic connection. You know, right. Those things and are then, taking a beating. Yeah, and so and then uh, Hondo uh, and as Morgan keep and then with Ezra's help keep trying to put the treasure that's in the cargo hold up on the winch yeah. and so like no the bombs first so he <laughs> makes them give that up. Oh, uh, and you know what? One of the things uh, after when they're trying to escape those activated uh, multiple sentry droids, you know they uh, get to the cargo hold and what does uh, Zeb tell Ezra? You know shut the door but unfortunately yeah, yeah. exactly so the, you know they, they have to interrupt their sending the cargo over to to escape and you know, they close the door and the, right. of course there's a big hole in it's it big yeah. Hole. yeah which, which Ezra needed to listen to orders which he wasn't but. and you know what's interesting about that scene is that on Rebels Recon I think it was Pablo that was talking about uh, when that episode was being designed that gag wasn't actually in mind. Um, it's just that huh. they were trying to portray Ezra's impatience. And so, you know, why wait for the power to come back on on this derelict ship? Just take out the lightsaber and get through it. There's no reason to salvage right. the door. Well, and then yeah. when they got to that part of the story, they just had to run with it. And it turned out to be a great gag. Yeah, that was a good gag. And But it also made me beg the question, why isn't Ezra slicing and dicing on these droids? That's a good question. Um, you know, story convenience, I guess, is the number one reason. But, I suppose, uh, yeah. But um, I, I don't, I don't know. Is it because uh, you know, narrow hallway? I'm trying to come up with a reason. You know, yeah, narrow no. hallway. <laughs> couldn't get into a, couldn't get into a, a position with his lightsaber. You know, before he'd be overwhelmed by these droids. Yeah, um, yeah. that's so just what I, I was trying to figure. I was like watching it again, going, well, okay, so is he just positioning I, or? But you know, I gotta tell you, I really liked the way um, the way that scene played out with them fleeing from those droids yeah. and retreating and hiding behind cover and returning fire. Uh, you know, Zeb ends up having to jump on some of the bombs as they're cranking him up the winch, and then uh, Ezra runs up after him and leaps uh, onto the you know to the bombs. It was a very well directed and executed 
action scene. Yeah. Um, Rebels is good with that in general, but I thought that one was particularly, especially the banter back and forth between Ezra mm-hmm. and Zeb, and then um, it just everything. It, it was just very, very well written. I mm-hmm. was really into that part. And, uh, you know, it, and, I'll, and I'll confess to you, the first time I saw this episode, I wasn't, I was just kind of, well, I'm not sure what the point of this episode was, but you know, even if it ends up just being a standalone, these proton bombs and don't end up being used later. It yeah. was an enjoyable episode. Yeah. It was just, it was really quite good uh, for these types of reasons. Yeah. And you know, uh, one of the things uh, I, I really enjoyed seeing more Zeb this time mm-hmm. and, and, and more of a take charge role. Um, yeah. I also, well, that you brought that up, yeah. uh, you know, Hera put Zeb in charge of this mission because she felt that, uh, you know, Ezra was the one that brought the mission to them and he thought that he should be in charge because he found mm-hmm. it. And Hera, of course, doesn't trust Hondo, certainly doesn't trust as Morrigan and is trying to teach Ezra a lesson, you know, a little bit of humility, I think. And, uh, you know, to which Kanan says, you know, I know what you're trying to do, but Ezra has to learn for himself that uh, Hondo isn't the friend that he thinks he is. So, you know, that's one thing. But, you know, Ezra is kind of resentful throughout this episode. Uh, He kind of throws back uh, into Zeb's face some of the bad decisions or decisions that don't work out quite the way that Zeb intends them. Or then when Zeb gets captured by the droid and Ezra has to free him from that cell, or I guess Chopper's the one that actually let him out, but Ezra was there. So, you know, we've been... uh, and I mean we, uh, I, when I say we, uh, I've been harping on this for the last couple reviews we've done of uh, Rebels. Mm-hmm. You know, Ezra had his dark side issue. Is this just immaturity or is this a sign of a schism to be, that might grow between him and Zeb and other members of the crew? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, I'm starting to wonder if it's, it almost felt to me like a step backwards in his relationship with Zeb. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, like, in the end of uh, towards the end of season two, Zeb was kind of like going into the Zen state of being, listening to some cosmic rock jams, you know. Uh, right. When he was talking to him, and everything seemed cool, but now this time it was it was sort of like reminiscent of the Tie Fighter episode when they were going back and forth at each other the entire time, and that's fun. Don't get me wrong, that's fun. I, I'd like to think it's just more, I, you know, well. At first, I wanted to think, you know, oh, is this some of the inclination of the dark side still festering in there? Maybe it was hiding, you know? I'm thinking maybe it's just a little bit of the whole resenting not being taken seriously. You know? I think, yeah, I think you're right. Uh, I gave it a lot of consideration because I really thought going into the season with the Sith holocron that Ezra was going to be struggling quite a bit. Yeah. And that just hasn't been proven to be the case. And we've been talking about this a lot. And then I saw this and I, and I was trying to decide if it was a sign of that type of an issue. And you know, who knows, maybe it will be later on. But I think at this point, I'm not even, until we see Ezra actually backslide at some point into that type of behavior. This was more of the banter that we've come to expect between Ezra and Zeb. They, you know, it's Ezra, Zeb, and Chopper are kind of the three stooges, the the brothers of the, you know, the kids of the crew, as I think Kanan once called yeah. them in an earlier episode uh, from maybe season one. Yeah, the TIE Fighter episode that you were actually mm-hmm. talking about. Um, and so, you know, this was just a sibling rivalry uh, between the two of them. Um, so, well, well also, I, mean, I have to say about the whole lightsaber thing. Mm-hmm. I think you're right. I think it's it's the scene was better being an exchange of blaster fire, you know, right. um, instead of him just going all Jedi out on it. Uh, it, it I guess it, it still kind of bugs me, but I'm except I'm OK with it, you know, um, right. because because it, it, it felt more like a Han and Leia trying to escape the Empire kind of thing instead of a Clone Wars, which we got in a previous episode, again, with proton bombs, where Ezra gets to fight battle droids. And so, yeah, I could see why they might want to avoid that. Yeah. Well, and he did pull out his lightsaber. Well, and this is the part we haven't got right, to yet. Right. So, the, you know, the end of that scene where they finally jump on the bombs and they're riding the winch back up to the ghost, which is floating behind the freighter. 
Um, the sentry droids are not stupid. They walk up to the wen- to the wench and they start yeah. shooting it. Yeah. That was pretty uh, cool because they know that you know these two will, should plummet to their doom if the wench gets destroyed. And so the cable comes loose. It seems and, kind of vindictive, doesn't it? You know. Uh, well, that's the empire for you. Yeah, I uh, guess. Uh-huh. And you know these are imperial droids, but uh, sure. so so you know they start to fall, but then uh, Zeb, with his amazing display of agility and dexterity, mm-hmm. grabs monkey, onto monkey the butt. cable, mm-hmm. and then I guess grabs onto Zeb with his foot, or grabs onto Ezra with his foot, yeah. And so they they manage to hoist up and and get out of there, and um, so that's a great scene. But then you know, along the way, uh, you know Ezra's been using his lightsaber to deflect to bolt, and you know it's kind of impressive. He's on. Zeb's back, yeah. Just you know, not even, not even really looking in the direction of the droids, and he's still deflecting blaster fire. Right, just kind of swinging in the breeze too. Yeah, you know, uh, <laughs> with that thing flying around. Um, did you notice that when the cargo hold blew up and it blew one of the droids past him, he was almost saying a robot? Oh no! Oh, I missed happening? that. I mean, it didn't say oh no or something, but it was like an, ah <laughs> when it was going, and I was like uh, thinking to myself, what? Well, why would he be afraid? I mean, he's a robot you know, or a droid or something. There doesn't. I All guess right. they can be afraid. I mean, R two or C three PO and R two act afraid. So, given the human yeah. characteristic. Here's a nitpicky um, detail, but we've now seen Chopper just fly around at will this season. <laughs> you know, yeah. in the uh, yeah. Super Commandos episode, you know, he engaged his uh, rocket booster for quite a long time and moved mm-hmm. at quite a rate of speed to get away from those Mandalorians. And then he used it to get away from, from the Imperial freighter back to the ghost on this episode. Why doesn't every droid have this? Why didn't those sentries have those things built in? Uh, at, at this point, I just can't imagine what the reason... I mean, it doesn't seem that those boosters take up that much room in a droid chassis and the fuel certainly doesn't take up that much room i mean and because chopper can certainly go anywhere again nitpicky point but um you know with these super sentry droids on board the freighter i don't know i think maybe i would have gone ahead and sprung for the boosters on these guys too well you know uh the empire is probably they're very utilitarian so they're thinking what do we need to use them for and we just need to use them to walk around and right. centrally. So. Yeah. You know, we've completely neglected to mention Melch, the Ugnaught. Oh, yeah. Uh, and so, yeah, backtracking again. Sorry, scoundrels. That when they got onto the freighter and they're prowling around looking for the cargo hold, <laughs> this little Ugnaught comes charging up to Hondo and attempts to tackle him and beat him up. And <laughs> it turns out that this character is named Melch and he is an Ugnaught that's been part of Hondo's crew. And Hondo had made a previous attempt to uh, recover the treasure and things from this freighter, and it didn't go so well, and Melch was left there. Which, okay, as an aside, one of my favorite lines of this entire episode was Zeb accusing Hondo of, you know, you you didn't tell us all the truth. To which Hondo responded, he's like, ah, I told you some of the truth. In the past, I didn't tell you any of the truth, so don't tell me I haven't grown. (laughs) Right, that's so great. (laughs) <laughs> I don't know that I got that exactly right, but but again, Ezra's coming to his aid, saying, "Well, he didn't really lie to us, you." Know? Uh, it, it's just funny how Ezra can kind of skirt around his training, you know, his morals, his Jedi morals, you might say, when it comes to dealing with Hondo, yeah. You know? mm-hmm. Yeah, but uh, so you know, hey, Jim Cummings is Hondo is just awesome. Yeah, but. Uh, so Melch, when uh, the sentry droids are attacking the cargo hold, <laughs> there's a particular box that Hondo is very fond of. He's convinced t- contains, I guess, the treasure. And I'd love to know what he actually thought he was getting in that yeah. box. But that was the one piece Hondo gets back to the ghost. And that's supposed to be his share of the loot from this freighter. And when he opens it up, Melch is inside. And they had thought that Melch had fallen over the side of the open cargo bay right. uh, when they're back on the ship. So, uh, I don't know. What would you think of Melch the Ugnaught? I thought he was good for comic relief. I, I think the Ugnaught concept is a pretty good one. Uh, mm-hmm. I thought it was funny when he punched Hondo in the stomach. Uh, yeah. Man, and I know Hondo's not as uh, fierce as he used to be. Yeah, No, he's of, an old man. He's a yeah. self old yeah. man, too. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I guess we get a lot of Ugnaughts and Rebels because that was a model they made back in season one. 
yeah. and they don't ha- quite have the budget that Clone Wars did, and so they're limited to the you know in the number of models that they can make for the show. But they're used effectively. I, I think so far oh, we've sure. seen them. I've really liked it, like especially in the very first. Uh, I guess that uh, hour season uh, opener when Hondo's saying, yeah, sorry, I had to take off, and the Ugnaught next to him is kind of cracking up, you know. Um, Mm -hmm. They don't really seem, well, of course, not very bright, because uh, Hondo negotiated a 1% share with him and offered him two, and he was really happy to take it. (laughs) Because he left him behind. Yeah, right. To make up for it, he was going to give him two, he's doubling his share, which is 2%, and Melch thought that was great. Yeah, sure, okay, great. Yeah, He's probably thinking, there's nobody else i got to split it with now. Right. Which. Well, I think we're getting towards the end of this review. Yep. Is there any other points you wanted to hit? Um, oh, I just thought that it was a pretty good all-round episode. I really enjoyed the interaction with all the characters. I thought Hera came off a little harsh sometimes, um, which she's concerned, of course, but she seemed a little snappy to, to Sabine. You know, uh, well, you know, uh, yes, um, I think... One of the things I liked about this episode was is that it really did involve the entire crew of the yes, ghost. Yeah, it, it, Zeb and Ezra and I guess Chopper on top of that got the most action on the uh, the freighter itself. But Kanan, Sabine, and Hera, and even AP Five were uh, featured quite a bit. Rex wasn't around, mm-hmm. but uh, you know and he's kind of become a member of that crew as well. Right. But uh, but so, but you know, but Hera got to be in this episode more and you know she was giving commands uh and i really like seeing a little bit of the partnership she has with kanan which was you know she decided she was going to teach ezra a lesson and then kanan kind of advised her on that afterwards right. uh you know they they've really taken upon the two of them to bring ezra up as a rebel as a soldier yeah. as a fighter and, you know, Kanan is in charge of Ezra's force training. And many times Hera takes on the, uh, I'm not sure how to phrase that. I don't want to use streetwise because Ezra's already that from his time as an orphan on the fall. But just, uh, I guess, seeing the bigger picture and command and being a responsible soldier. Yeah, sort of martial, more of a martial approach. Orderly right. and, yeah, system, uh, systemic. Is that what I'm thinking of? Mm-hmm. Um yeah, I thought it was also. I thought one of the funny parts for me was when uh, Hondo kind of stepped on a landmine or a bear trap when he said, uh, "Oh, I'm glad uh, I could make you see things my way." Oh, I mean, uh, you know, or, <laughs> or oh, he kept making yeah, vision puns. references. Yeah, he goes, you know, you'd be blind not to see this. Oh, sorry, uh, uh, you know, but you, you know, you must see this. Oh, sorry again. Yeah, and, you know. crowd. <laughs> yeah, yeah, did, didn't bother Kanan in one bit, but mm. uh, the blindness puns. All right. <laughs> Well, then, let's go ahead and start wrapping this up. Uh, what, how would you uh, go ahead and grade this one? I'm going to give it a 96.5. Oh. Yeah, I really, I, I had fun. I had fun watching it. And I, I didn't really, like like I said, any time that Hondo's involved, it just kind of knocks it up a letter grade, in my opinion. It's fun. And plus, I like seeing the elements they brought into it. The little things that tied out and were kind of funny later. Uh, AP5, I liked seeing him back. Um, the battle droids are pretty awesome. The sentry mm-hmm. droids. Um, yeah, yeah. I I just thought all around the just the little element elements uh, culminated into a re- really really good episode. I'm I'm giving it an A minus. Um, so you know ninety one ninety two somewhere around there, and I'm really docking it because um, I'm not certain how this fits into the overall story, and it may be that these proton bombs will show up again and later in the season and this this episode will be more important um I, the other thing i'm docking it for just a little bit is the uh i've got fond memories of those dark troopers <laughs> from the dark yeah. forces game and you know it's nice that they were included that they brought these out of legends and they introduced them here uh but i'd like to have seen them and, and that's not to say that they were pushovers because they certainly weren't you know uh, as morgan shot that one a dozen times and the thing got back up but right. i expect to see these droids on the front lines in a battle somewhere not as centuries on a you know irrelevant cargo freighter that has been abandoned to a storm on a world you know on the edges of space yeah. so yeah. anyway but hey i really enjoyed it uh i you know again like you said the hondo inclusion bumps up the grades he always gets great lines he's you know and in 
you know, when you say things like comedic effect, I'm afraid it sounds sometimes like slapstick and, you know, hu- just, you know, silly humor. But that's not it at all. I mean, it was right. actually it was good humor. It was fun. It was enjoyable. Right. So. Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, I think that'll do it for our review. Um, Scoundrels, I hope you enjoyed this. And if you want to reach us on social media, we are at SQPod on Twitter. Darth Taxis is at Darth Taxis. And I am at DJKVER2. We're on Facebook at Facebook.com slash SQPod. As always, we love getting your email. And we'd love to get your Rebels thoughts. Send those to SQPod at RetroZap.com. And the best way you can show our support, which would be to really uh, leave us a review on iTunes. Uh, we haven't been getting many of those lately. Uh, any of those lately Uh, and as every show will tell you those are one of the best ways you can help others find the show Mm -hmm. so i think uh, i think that'll do it for this week you have any other final thoughts taxes no uh just looking forward to the next episode i have a feeling it's going to well i think we saw that thrawn's involved again and i think things are going to start kind of getting a little bit uh more pitched as we go to a mid-season crescendo that makes sense mm-hmm. yeah so looking forward to it and looking forward to doing this again with you des yeah as always as always yeah. well, we got a regular episode coming up next week so join us then thanks for listening everyone and may the force be with you